All right, well, our weather story obviously is going on uh, down off the Florida Keys right now. We've had a pretty nice stretch overall. Yeah, overall, we had a few showers here or there. In fact, some places seeing a couple showers this evening, but that's going to come to an end. It's really, as you mentioned, Ken, all eyes are on uh, the Florida coastline as Irma continues to make its close approach to the area. In fact, we're tracking that right now. That's not the only hurricane we're tracking, too. We actually have Jose that we're going to be watching, uh, but you can see the clear skies that we're uh, seeing throughout really all of New England. That front has pushed through, high pressure building in, and that's going to keep us high and dry really for the at least few next few days until we get into the middle of the week. Things start to change just a little bit, but we have Irma, a Category 3 storm, also Jose, a Category 4 storm. This is actually one of the first times that we've had back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back major hurricanes in the Atlantic Basin. We'll have to run some records, but as far as I'm seeing, the first time that this has ever happened. So pretty remarkable that we're seeing that. Hurricane Irma, Category 3 storm, 120 mile per hour maximum winds with pressure at 933. It's entering into an area that's really conducive for it to strengthen and deepen. So we'll watch to see if it does that before it does actually make landfall right off of uh, the Florida Keys there. The Cuban coastline actually did a number on this storm, really weakened it a little bit. So we're watching Irma. This is what Futurecast looks like as we go hour by hour, making landfall in Key West as it makes its trek further to the north. There's Marco Island in Naples. There's Fort Myers, Tampa, and Sarasota. Kind of tracking right along the west coast. So obviously we're talking about rain, wind, and storm surge along with this system. And the rain amounts could be heavy. Uh, the yellow color suggesting right along the spine of Florida, 5 to 10 inches, potentially up to 20 inches in some areas. So the biggest impacts will be storm surge, life-threatening storm surge possible on both coasts. The winds, we could see widespread uh, power loss, and we're already seeing that over 110,000 people without power in Dade County, and rain up to 20 inches of rain in some locations. And then we have Hurricane Jose, fortunately just to the north of Anguilla and Barbuda, where they really took a pounding from Irma a little earlier. Still a, a strong hurricane at Category 4. This is Jose's path. Notice how it goes around and kind of just sits there. So we'll be watching this for the next couple of days as well. Our satellite and radar scanning completely dry for the most part. We do have a few showers in the Boston area, just light sprinkles more than anything. As high pressure builds on in, we are expecting a period of really nice weather heading into the beginning of the week. 68 was our high this afternoon. We're going to see temperatures falling into the 50s and 40s overnight. In fact, we're at 63 right now. Hour by hour keeps us partly cloudy for part of tomorrow, maybe a spot shower here or there, but most of us are dry, clearing out very nicely for, out for the day on Monday. A lot of sunshine with no weather issues. So tonight falling into the low 50s and upper 40s. Tomorrow we're back to the upper 60s and low 70s. We'll call it either side of 70 with a mix of sun and clouds. A very, very pleasant day. No weather worries, low humidity values. Look at Monday with temperatures in the upper 70s, a very pleasant day. And there's a couple 80s on the board there as we get into Tuesday and Wednesday looking really nice. A few sprinkles towards the end of the week, but you know what? We'll enjoy the sunshine while it's sticking around.